Hi everybody, this is ACT 3112 Topic 2, Business and Environment uh, This is lecture uh, Lecture 2 for week 2 And this lecture is supposed to be uh, To be done on Wednesday uh, 27 of October uh, at 11 a.m. Okay, so topic two, the title of this topic is business and environment. Uh, this topic uh, is supposed to help you to understand the factors that influence the preparation and framework of financial statement. Uh, the things that uh, have to be covered in this topic is business entity, environmental factors, business formation, and factors for consideration. So this course is uh, introductory to accounting course. So uh, you have to know that uh, accounting works uh, are affected by many factors. And the simple way to say it is like this. If a business is a small business and a simple business, then the accounting work is simple. If a business is a big business and uh, the business is complex, then the accounting work for this kind of business is very complex and a bit difficult. That is the simple way to say that. So given that, uh, given that uh, situation, uh, you have before you do or you learn about accounting you have to know about uh, about businesses uh, what are the different type or category of businesses and then you have to know factors that will affect businesses uh, how to start a business uh, these factors uh, these things will determine the type of accounting work that you have to do. Okay, so let's see. The first thing that you uh, you will see in this uh, lecture is types and forms of business ownership. Okay, so there are three types of businesses. Uh, if you go if you go out there, you see many shops. In your hometown or in KL or in Serdang, you will see many shops or businesses. These businesses can be categorized into several types. Okay, the first, uh, uh, there are three types, three main types of businesses. The first one is called service business. The second one is called merchandising business. The third one is called Uh, manufacturing business okay let's see what is a service business a service business is a business that does not sell anything but provide services a simple example for a service business is a laundry shop if you see a laundry shop the shop does not sell anything but the shop provide laundry services Another example is like uh, a clinic or a hospital. Uh, a clinic or a hospital does not sell anything. Basically, does not sell anything but provide uh, health service, medical service. Okay, see here, there are many examples here. Uh, Disney and Astro, uh, they are service businesses. They provide entertainment service. Malaysian Airlines, Air Asia, they provide transportation service. Uh, hotels, they provide hospitality and lodging service. Maybank, in Malaysia we have Maybank, uh, CIMB, Bank Islam, etc. They provide financial services. They are service businesses. And also we have uh, Cellcom, DG in Malaysia. They provide telecommunication uh, service. If you are from China or Indonesia or other places, I think you can you can see many service businesses in your place. 
So just remember, if a business does not sell anything but provide services, we call them service businesses. The second type of business is called merchandising business. Uh, this business purchase finished product from supplier and sell the same product to customer. If you see a business purchase finished product from suppliers and sell the same products to customer, then that business is is a merchandising business. The simple example is a grocery shop. You see a grocery shop, uh, the shop purchase bread, sugar, flour, and many other things from supplier. And then the, the shop sells the same thing to, to us, to customers. So there are many other examples uh, of merchandising business. Uh, for example, here in Malaysia, we have Tesco. I think Tesco is an international brand. Uh, so Tesco is a supermarket. So so this the same thing. Tesco, what Tesco do is Tesco purchase finished product from supplier and sell the same product to customers. So they are. Uh, Tesco is a general merchandise business. Seng Heng, we have in Malaysia we have Seng Heng. It is a consumer electronics business. Reject shop, reject shop sells apparels, uh, apparels. Uh, okay, what do you think about Shopee and Amazon? Uh, Shopee and Amazon. Uh, 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 online businesses. You, you you purchase many things from from Shopee and Amazon. Uh, they sell internet, books, music, video, and many more. Now almost everything they sell almost everything. So what do you think? Shopee and Amazon are they merchandise business or not? Uh, think about that. Okay, the third type of business is called manufacturing business. This business, the nature of this business is. A manufacturing business purchase raw material, process the raw material, and sell finished product. Um, so most of the time, a merchandise, uh, sorry, a, a manufacturing business uh, is a factory or has a factory. For example, in Malaysia, we have Barrels Chocolate uh, located near to UPM. Uh, Barrels Chocolate is an, an, exam, an example of a manufacturing business. The, the factory uh, purchase raw chocolate, process the raw chocolate, and then uh, sell finished product, sell chocolates to, to the market, to the customers. Other examples that you can see in this slide is General Motors Corporation, Samsung, Dell Incorporated, Nike, The Coke Company, and Sony Corporation. Uh, very important for you to know this type of businesses. You can see that from these three types of businesses, a service business is the simplest uh, type. Because a service business does not sell anything. It just provides services. Uh, a merchandising business is a bit complex because the merchandising uh, merchandising business purchase raw uh, purchase finished product product from suppliers and then the business uh, sell the products to customers uh, so this uh, merchandising business they have uh, they have inventories or stock to keep uh, manufacturing business is the most complex uh, among the three types of businesses because manufacturing businesses, they have to purchase raw materials. And then they have to process the raw materials. They have factories. And then they sell finished products. So you can imagine the business is complex. So how this affect accounting, accounting work? So you will, the, the, you, you can see that 
if a if a business is a simple business then you can imagine that the accounting record is simple uh, so accounting record for uh, a service business is simple but a country record for a merchandising, a merchandising business is a bit complex. And the accounting works and record for manuf manufacturing businesses uh, are very complex. Uh. Okay, so businesses also can be seen uh, according to the ownership. According to the ownership. So, like I said earlier, if you go out there, you will see you will see many businesses. The, the businesses can be categorized according to types. Uh, service business, merchandising business, and manufacturing business. And also, this business can be categorized according to the ownership, uh, according to who own the business. So, if we look at uh, the ownership, we will see that companies or businesses can be categorized into three main categories. The first one is called sole, property, sole proprietorship business. The second type is called, is called uh, partnership business. And the third type is companies. Okay, I don't have to worry about the limited liability company. We focus on three main types of businesses. Okay, so let's see what is a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship business is a business owned by one person. Uh, if you go out there, you go to your hometown or you go to Serdang or you go to KL, if you see a business is owned by one person, then that business is called a sole proprietorship business. Most of the time, this kind of business uh, are small businesses like grocery shop, uh, laundry service, uh, laundry business what is small res restaurant uh, small restaurant for example most of the time is owned by one person but the business has several workers so workers and owner is different uh, the business is owned by one person the business can hire many workers so okay so like i said earlier if a business is owned by one person we call the business a sole proprietorship business. Uh, there are several advantages of a sole proprietorship business. Uh, one of it is, uh, one of them is, uh, it is very very easy to to start and to organize. You can start a sole proprietorship business in Malaysia. You can start a sole proprietorship sole proprietorship business uh, very easily. You can start the business and then you can register the business in within one day or within several hours. You can get the re re registration done and you can start doing the business. And also easy to organize. The business is small. It is owned by one person. That person can make all the de business decision. Very easy to organize. Uh, but it uh, and also uh, another good thing about a uh, sole proprietorship is if the business is making profit then all, all the profit will go into the owner's pocket uh, because it is owned by one person if the business makes profit all the profit will go into the owner's pocket uh, but there are several disadvantages of uh, starting a sole proprietorship business uh, one of the advantages is uh, limited to financial resources of the owner uh, a sole proprietorship business is started by one person, so the capital is limited uh, according to the how much uh, the the owner has. If the owner has only ten thousand dollar to start the business, then that's all. Uh, so the the capital al always uh, uh, limited. And also uh, another another. Uh, disadvantage of uh, starting a sole proprietorship business is limited skill. Uh, if the owner of the business only has production skill, then that's all. Uh, he has uh, limited skill to to manage and to to run the business. Uh, 
uh, because if you want to run a business a production skill is uh, only is not sufficient you have to have marketing skill uh, maybe human resource uh, skill and knowledge etc so that is one weakness of so proprietorship there are many more if you read the textbook uh, later you will see a, a longer discussion about the advantages and disadvantages of starting a proprietorship but the uh, to summarize everything uh, you can say that a sole proprietorship business is a simple business because it is small owned by one person simple Okay, the second uh, type of businesses according to ownership is called partnership. Uh, partnership, the simple definition for a partnership business is a business owned by several individuals. The thing can be like this. Uh, several, uh, like five friends, they have same hobby. They like to, to eat seafood. So, uh, and then they like to cook seafood. So at one time they decide to 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 start a business together. So they can start a partnership business. Uh, so the business is owned by five partners. Okay, the good thing about this business is uh, you you can combine the skills and resources of more than one person. So the business has more skillful. Uh, people and more capital uh, let's say five five person each of them uh, con can contribute ten thousand dollars so to start the business they have fifty thousand uh, dollars they pull the resources together uh, one of the good thing of the so property ship business is is uh, is the one that you can see in this uh, in this slide it uh, you can combine skills and resources of more than one person uh, but uh, a partnership also has several disadvantages uh, one of the disadvantages is uh, a bit difficult to to make business decision or take longer time to make business decision because when you have uh, a partnership business uh, when you want to make a business decision for example to decide how many product to produce uh, how many types of product product uh, to produce or or how many workers to hire etc you have to discuss among the partners so it takes a longer time to make business decision uh, compared to a sole property ship business a sole property ship business is owned by one person uh, that person can make business decision very quickly uh, but partnership every time they want to make a, a important business decision they will have to to discuss uh, the partners has have to be uh, have to agree with the decision so it takes a longer time so here is the comparison between uh, sole property ship business and partnership business uh, this is a uh, uh, for malaysia for malaysia uh, partnership malaysian partnership uh, in other countries maybe you have also uh, partnership business and sole proprietorship business but uh, they will be slightly different uh, law and regulation uh, and also slightly different um, way of uh, maybe slightly different in terms of law and regulation but this is the thing that is uh, relevant for Malaysia okay see let's see here number one uh, in terms of member or owner so property business is, is owned by one person partnership in Malaysia is a business owned by two or more but less than 20 percent uh, and then number two capital contribution when you want to start a business you have to contribute capital to the business uh, for so property business the amount is limited uh, limited to the amount that can be contributed by the owner the owner is one so the amount of capital uh, is limited but partnership maybe the partnership can have bigger capital uh, because uh, 
the partnership is owned by many people so all these partners can contribute uh, capital so maybe a partnership business can can have bigger amount of capital compared to sole, pro sole propertyship business number three liability both sole propertyship and partnership uh, are unlimited liability business okay what it means by unlimited liability unlimited liability means something like this uh, if the business uh, borrow money from bank and then suddenly the business uh, having problem and cannot pay the bank loan uh, for unlimited liability business bank can take the asset of the business if the asset is not enough to cover the bank loan bank also can take the personal asset of the owner of the business okay and uh, you have to understand it for example let's say you you start a sole proprietorship business uh, you start a small uh, shop and then uh, you borrow money from bank uh, $30,000 after four months the business is not doing well and you have to close the business unfortunately uh, what will happen is bank wants their money back so let's say you have a uh, uh, bank loan balance the unpaid balance is twenty five thousand dollar so bank want their money back so bank will take the business asset bank will sell the equipment maybe the uh, the inventories etc if the asset of the business is not enough to cover the bank loan amount then bank will take your personal asset bank can take your car bank can take your house uh, and other personal asset to to cover the bank loan that, that the business has made same goes to partnership if you start a partnership and then the partnership business is not good cannot pay back the bank loan bank or the lenders or the creditors they can they can take your uh, they can take the business asset and also if not enough or sufficient then they can take the owner's personal asset so that it that that what it means by the term unlimited liability number four uh, there is no specific law for sole proprietorship business but for the partnership um, there is a partnership act 1961 in Malaysia so if a partnership is having uh, legal issues uh, and then uh, we have to refer to the partnership act 1961 uh, so problems can be settled when we most of the time problems problems can be settled by referring to the partnership act in term of legislation okay both sole proprietorship and partnership is not a legal entity both sole proprietorship and partnership is are not a legal entity uh, not a legal entity means something like this if you start a partnership business or you start a sole proprietorship business they are not a legal entity the business cannot purchase asset when you want to purchase asset for your shop you have to use the owner's name uh, and also the business uh, as far as i know cannot make bank loan bank loan but when the business want to make bank loan the owner of the business has to use his or her own name uh, on behalf of the business and also if something like this if uh, if a customer uh, does not happy with a sole propertyship business or partnership business and then the customer sue the business in court then in court the the owner of this business ha have uh, have to have uh, will be sued in court uh, because the customer cannot sue the business 
the business is not a legal entity uh, but anything happen if the business is sued in court the owner of the business will be sued uh, agreement uh, if you start a sole proprietorship there is no written agreement because the business is owned by only one person uh, but if uh, you start a partnership business you have to write a partnership agreement uh, because there are many partners so all partners has to sign an agreement uh, called partnership agreement in that agreement um, there are details about the partnership how many members uh, how many partners in the partnership how how much each partner contributed to the business or capital comp contribution how to dissolve the partnership how to divide the profit uh, made by the business how to divide the loss uh, if the business is making loss etc and then number seven types of business okay so proprietorship mostly are small businesses uh, like i said earlier small bro grocery shop uh, small laundry shop small uh, restaurant etc most of the time but uh, partnership most of the time in malaysia partnership is 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 started by uh, professionals like doctors several doctors they start a partnership business and then they open several clinics or maybe one clinic or maybe even uh, okay and then lawyers uh, engineers several of them uh, start a business it is a partnership business and then they do their business most of the time okay another type of company sorry another type of business that we have in malaysia is called companies companies can be divided into two types okay uh, companies are businesses owned by shareholders I remember that the simple definition for companies uh, is businesses owned by shareholders companies they, they can issue or sell shares i hope you read more about this uh, okay in malaysia we have two types of companies we have two types of companies we call them uh, public limited company and private limited companies the in in bahasa melayu public limited company is called syarikat berhad and private limited company is called syarikat sendirian berhad okay the characteristic see number one uh, who are the owners this is the basic uh, but if you look at the current uh, law and regulation, maybe a bit different. Uh, I think now in Malaysia, they allow a single person to start a company. Uh, but on, I don't want to go to that detail uh, about law and regulation. But this is the basic. Basically, public limited company, uh, the number of the shareholders or the owner of the business is minimum to maximum is unlimited uh, private limited company uh, minimum number of shareholder is 2 maximum 50 so public limited companies mostly are big companies like a asia berhad uh, malaysian airlines berhad petronas berhad uh, they the shareholders the people who own the business are unlimited uh, private limited companies uh, are smaller companies uh, they are owned by maximum 50 shareholders most of the time private limited companies are uh, family businesses so each family member will have shares in the business so so they can share the profit etc so that's the situation okay number two issue of shares for public limited company or syarikat berhad public are invited to buy the shares 
Uh, okay. Public companies in Malaysia, they sell shares to everybody. If you want to purchase shares of Petronas or AirAsia or Maxis or other Berhad companies, you can purchase or buy the shares in Bursa Malaysia, Malaysian Stock Exchange. But for private limited company, uh, shares are not allowed to be sold to public. They they are private companies. They they sell the shares among themselves, among the shareholders. Also, they can invite people to purchase their shares, but they cannot sell to public. Number three, listing requirement. Uh, public limited company or syarikat berhad, these companies are listed in Bursa Malaysia. They can be listed in Bursa Malaysia. They can sell their shares in Bursa Malaysia. But uh, private limited companies, they, their shares are not publicly listed. Uh, number four, financial information. Number four, financial information. For public limited company or syarikat berhad, they have to publish or to disclose or to show their financial statement to the public. Uh, companies like Petronas, Maxis, AirAsia and other uh, syarikat berhad in Malaysia, uh, you can see their financial statement at any time. Most of the time, they will... They will uh, put their financial statement in their website. Uh, you can go to the uh, AASIA website. Uh, you click, there is a section for public uh, investor relation or something. And you can download their financial statement. And you can see how much profit they make, how many assets they have, how much liabilities they have, uh, everything. They have to show to the public. Yeah. But for private limited company, it is it is not compulsory for them to show their financial statement to the public. Because they, they are private companies. They can keep they can keep the their financial statement private. Managing. Okay, number five managing. Uh, public companies or syarikat berhad are big businesses. They are owned by thousands of shareholders these shareholders contribute capital but they are not necessarily know how to manage the business so what is the the thing that they have done uh, is most of the time these shareholders hires professional managers uh, the highest level manager in a, a in a company is called ceo if you see CEO of this company and this company of this company, uh, you know now he or she is a, a manager, the, the highest level manager in a company. They are hired by the business to, to manage the business, to manage the company. Uh, okay. uh, but uh, for private limited company, remember, like I said earlier, there are small companies uh, mostly they are family businesses so most of the time they are run by shareholders uh, and also sometimes they hire uh, prof professional managers also to run the to run the, the business liability number six liability uh, both public limited company and private limited company are limited liability business limited liability business means that if the company borrow money from bank let's say one hundred thousand dollar the company borrow one hundred thousand dollar from bank but at one time the company bankrupt cannot pay back the one hundred thousand dollar the bank can take the business asset only but the bank cannot take the owner's personal asset. Uh, that, that is what we call as limited liability. Uh, remember, when I explain about unlimited liability, so there is a difference between unlimited liability and limited liability. And then examples. So we have many examples here. For Malaysia, we have Telecom Berhad. Tenaga National Berhad, Petronas Berhad, AASIA Berhad, that they are 
public limited company or syarikat berhad but private limited companies uh, the example that we have here is Nazar Kia sendirian berhad I think uh, Dabi sendirian berhad also There's, uh, when you see Malaysian businesses that have sendirian berhad or SDN BHD at the end of its name you know that they are private limited company they are companies but they are private limited companies okay so there is another one limited liability partnership uh, this is a new a new type of business that we have Malaysia in Malaysia uh, this kind of business is a, a liability mm. eh, sorry a partnership but it is a limited liability partnership so I don't want to go to deta uh, in detail about this but I think if you know the three main types of businesses uh, according to ownership that I have explained before the sole property ship, partnership and companies then it is okay for you okay the next thing in this okay uh, uh, before I continue with the next section so you can see uh, a sole property ship business is a simple business a partnership business is a bit complex because the bis the business is owned by by several owners and also maybe the bis most of the time the business is a bit bigger compared to sole property ship business uh, a company is the most complex business uh, it is uh, there are always uh, uh, there are always big businesses companies are always big businesses and also they are owned by thousands of people uh, they are complex the business are complex and most of the time they are subjected to many law and regulations Companies, another character, characteristic of a company is uh, companies, uh, they have to pay company's tax. Like business tax. But for partnership and sole property, they don't have, be, they don't have to pay uh, business tax. Uh, but the owner of the businesses uh, have to pay personal income tax only. Okay, but companies they have to pay companies tax or corporate tax. So, uh, so property ship business is is simple. So the accounting record for sole property ship businesses are simple. Uh, partnership businesses are a bit complex. So accounting record for partnership businesses are a bit complex. Companies businesses are very complex so the accounting record for them are very complex so in this course you will learn about uh, how to do accounting record for for a sole proprietorship merchandising business so it is not very complex a sole proprietorship business is a small business Merchandising business is not a very good, uh, not a very complex business. Uh, so that is the thing that you will learn in this course. Okay, so general environment, six factors that influence business. Uh, so if you want to start a business, uh, or or things like this, uh, you have. Uh, now you know about the type of businesses and then now you will learn in this uh, in this subtopic you will learn about factors that can affect the the business operation and nature okay there are several uh, there are six factors that can influence uh, business operations and and performance also okay let's see the first one is the first factor then can that can affect that can affect a business uh, operation and performance is political factors uh, political factors may determine how freely a business can operate stable 
or strong government versus unstable or weak government. Okay, so for politic, political factors, uh, the simple way to explain it is like this. Uh, political factors, uh, political situation in a country can affect businesses. Uh, like in Malaysia, uh, before year 2000, 2018, Uh, we have a very stable government. Uh, the business are booming. And then suddenly we have uh, a change in government in year 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So a new government taken over. Uh, then the situation is not very good. Uh, the political... Uh, environment that we have in Malaysia is not very good, not very stable. So the business are not good during that time. Economic are not, are not, uh, is not good during that time. Until now, we have uh, seen like three times uh, the Prime Minister has, uh, has changed for three times. So the political situation in Malaysia now is not good, it's not stable. This uh, affect the the businesses, the uh, operation of businesses and performance of businesses in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, number two, economic conditions. The second factor is economic condition. Economic conditions and factors can include things such as unemployment rates, consu- consumers' disposable income, and interest rates, and gross domestic product. So we can say that. Uh, the economic condition is like this. Uh, sometimes the economy is booming. Sometimes economy is re- in recession. Uh, so, if the economy is booming, if the economy is good, employment rate is high, interest rate is low, uh, then businesses will do very well. Uh, they can uh, have good performance, easy for them to operate, and then they will make good profit. But when the economy is in recession, everybody, we, uh, all businesses, most businesses will face uh, difficulties. Okay. Social, uh, socio-cultural factors. Uh, factor number three is so, so, socio-cultural uh, factors. Some socio, socio-cultural factors include population size cultural trends and uh, demographics like age, gender, and race. So these socio, socio-cultural factors also can affect business performance and operation. Uh, like now, there are trends of pre- uh, preferring healthy and environmental friendly products. So this product can sell very well. Now, uh, in many developed countries, people uh, uh, prefer to purchase healthy products, uh, organic products, and also they prefer to purchase environmental friendly products, products that can be recycled, products that are sustainable uh, from sustainable sources, etc. Uh, in Malaysia, we are starting to go that way also. Uh, more and more people like to purchase healthy healthy products uh, and environmental friendly products. So this is socio cultural factor. The way the 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 way uh, the way people behave, the trends among the people, etc. Technology also can effect number four technology also can have influence on business operation and performance uh, technology can help businesses improve their operation okay that is the positive effect of technology you can use robotics you can use robots in your production process uh, so technology can help improve business operation. At the same time, uh, sometimes 
uh, technology can have negative effect on a negative effect on business performance and and operation for example uh, the new technology that has been uh, that we can see is internet uh, internet uh, sorry internet uh, has a positive effect on businesses uh, now businesses can do marketing very easily they can advertise in in social media etc very easily they can have website that is the good thing about internet uh, but uh, a technology that has negative effect on some businesses is the the smartphone uh, the smartphone is like a new technology now when uh, the one of the negative effect of smartphone on businesses is the there is a reduce or a reduced demand for camera uh, before we use smartphone uh, everybody has to purchase a camera uh, when we go travel we bring our camera uh, and then we have a handphone uh, separate things uh, but now uh, less and less people bring camera anymore because we can take photos very good quality photos using our smartphone uh, so that's another example and also maybe the uh, what i call this tablet uh, tablet many many years ago uh, we do our works on laptops now we have tablets the the demand for laptop i think is the de- it's decrease if not much uh, it is decrease a bit because uh, many works can be done using a tablet now we can type in tablet we can do assignment using tablet etc okay environment environmental factors like climate change natural natural disasters and pollution levels can affect the supply of the supply chain or increase cost of for raw material also creates new market for recycling and renewable energy so this environment also affect the performance and operation of businesses now there are many natural disasters so it has negative effect on the business legal legal factors include health and safety regulations employment laws antitrust laws and discrimination laws have effect have affected the way businesses doing their operation and their performance also now we have copyright laws this laws reduce piracy problems so if we have a very strong uh, copyright laws then the the leg, uh, legitimate business uh, are happy legitimate businesses are happy because they can sell more original items original cds vcds dvds uh, blu-rays etc but if we have weak copyright laws then they will the the legitimate seller uh, is not happy because there are many piracy pirates product pirate cds pirate dvds pirate blu-rays etc so legal is a factor that can affect business performance and operation okay that are the six factors now you have to know a, a bit about business formation and other factors uh, how to start a business in malaysia okay remember uh, the six factors that i have discussed in the previous slide these factors can affect businesses operation and performance so they also will affect the accounting works the accounting works that have to be done to a business uh, for a business 
so that is the thing that uh, you have to to aware now this is about how uh, business formation and other factors okay uh, the main reason for starting a business is to make profit that's the main reason uh, everybody knows about this uh, you are a bachelor of economic student and i think several uh, students from ecology department uh, ecology faculty that is, this is the general knowledge a person start a business because he or she wants to make profit and then uh, before a person uh, start a business uh, the person has to consider several factors okay you can see the second point here in this slide factors to consider before starting a business this factors is useful if in the future you want uh, let's say you want to start a business so think about this uh, first the first factor that you have to consider is do you have any special skill uh, most of the time you start a business because you have something special to offer to customer maybe you you are good at uh, baking cakes so you start a, a bakery business maybe you are good at uh, taking photos then you start a photography business so most of the time people start a business because they have special skill uh, to offer or special product to offer to customers otherwise you, it is not a good idea to start a business and then the second factor is how do you fund your business uh, do you have capital you have sufficient capital uh, you will start your the your your business using your own cash or you have to borrow from from somebody or from other parties uh, that is the thing that you have to think to consider Fact, uh, factor number three how much capital do you need or have uh, so you have to be very clear you want to start this business how much capital you need okay and also how much you have how much you can afford uh, factor number four what is your business idea okay this one is uh, has to be very clear also uh, and number factor number five have you carried out any market research okay before you want to do a business you better carry it out carry out any uh, you, you, you better carry out uh, market research uh, you have to be very certain there is a demand for the product or service that you want to sell uh, if you have good product but there is no demand then the business will not successful also if let's say you can provide a very good service but there is no demand for that service in the market so the uh, the business will not uh, success will not success okay let's see what uh, the next the next point in this slide is okay in malaysia it is very easy to start a business uh, i think if i'm not mistaken starting from like five years ago government uh, has do many things to simplify the process of uh, starting a business in malaysia uh, now it is very easy to start a business in malaysia uh, in malaysia this is the this the, the only sh uh, short explanation in malaysia if you want to start a business you have to register your business at Companies Commission of Malaysia or Suruhanjaya Syarikat Malaysia. Uh, the short form is SSM. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you want to start a, a sole proprietorship business, you can register. Uh, you just have to fill uh, online forms. And then you pay like 30 ringgit fee and then it is done. It can be done. So easy. Now, very easy to start a business in Malaysia. Whether you want to start a, 
uh, sole proprietorship, a partnership or companies, the process uh, a lot simpler uh, compared to six years ago uh, because government has done uh, many things to, to simplify the procedure to start a business in Malaysia. Okay, that is the end of topic two. Do not forget to write your name and metric number in the comment section. So, uh, because I will take that as as the lecture attendance. Thank you very much.